Good morning, Mets fans, and welcome to a Friday episode of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met, and welcome also to a post Happy Harvey Day Driving with Mr. Met. That's right. Not exactly as happy as we are used to it being, you know, in the past when Harvey would be the dominant pitcher that he, he was at one time, but he earned himself a victory last night. He pitched five innings against a pretty good lineup in the Cincinnati Reds, uh, and he got the win. And that's, uh, for me, a huge step forward for someone who is one of my favorite players uh, in baseball. I make no uh, apologies about the fact that I'm uh, continue to be a supporter of, of Matt Harvey. There, there's so much vitriol spewed around um, Mets Twitter and amongst the fans, the fan base, about this uh, Matt Harvey and how they people have just pretty much turned on him. And I, I hate it. It's so, it's so not what we are supposed to do as Mets fans. He's one of our guys. He is one of our guys. He's a homegrown Met. He's a guy who was phenomenal in the beginning parts of his career. It's a guy who, as I said last week, was riddled with injury after injury, setback after setback. And now he's at a crux in his career. Where, what is he? Is he going to ever get back to being the guy that he was in 2013 and in 2015? Or is he going to be a shell of himself like he's been in 2016 and for the most part in 2017 as well? We don't know, but one thing I do know is that as Mets fans, we should be supporting him. We should be hoping that he gets himself back uh, back to normal, back to good, and back to right. For one of two reasons. Reason number one, if he gets himself right, we might re-sign him. Who knows? If he gets himself right and we don't re-sign him, we might trade him and be able to get something for him. So I, I don't understand this mindset of Mets fans who are... I don't want to say they're rooting for him to fail, but who aren't rooting for him to succeed. Uh, I, I don't understand it at all. Um, if someone could help me understand it, I'd be happy to listen. But I, it's going to take a lot to convince me that you're right and I'm wrong. Cheer for your team. Support your team. Support your players. Period. So uh, Harvey had a good uh, a good game last night. Not a great game. A good game. Um, didn't strike any. Uh, well, I think he struck two batters out um, last night in five innings, which is perfectly fine. Um, it, it, it seemed like after the first inning, he settled in. He, I think he's going to have to learn to pitch to contact while he figures himself out here. And uh, I think he got lucky last night. There were a couple of balls that um, were right over the plate that the Reds batters just didn't square up. But, hey, it, it happens. You know, for as many times as he's been uh, been bit by the home run bug on, on even decent pitches... Um, he deserved a break last night. So, Harvey gets a W. The Mets get a W. They put up seven runs last night. Uh, two of them courtesy of cleanup hitter Brandon Nimmo. And I want to talk about Nimmo. I want to talk a little bit about Ligaris as well. Um, Brandon Nimmo is an interesting guy to, uh, to be watching right now because he's getting playing time. Uh, he's going to play every day. Uh, I think we can all agree that he is not a cleanup hitter. I think I can also agree that the sun is in literally the worst possible spot over my left shoulder, but uh, I'm getting into some shade here, hopefully. There we go. So, uh, yes. Um, so, yeah, Nimmo is certainly not a, not a cleanup hitter. Uh, I think we'll all agree on that. But uh, he did have two home runs last night. Uh, he's an infectious kind of player, though. And uh, there's something to be said for having a guy like that on the roster. My question is, when you look at Nimmo and Ligaris side by side... Um, can a competing team afford to have two guys like those two making up the fourth and fifth outfield spots or perhaps even the third and fourth outfield spots? I don't know the answer to that question, and I, I think it ultimately depends on what the rest of the team looks like. But for the Mets, I don't know that it's possible to carry both of them on the 25-man roster every day next year. And that leads me to what happens with Nimmo or Ligaris. It's, I don't think it's going to be both of them on the roster. I think it's going to have to be one or the other. Uh, but I could be wrong. You know, maybe they end up with uh, with Ligaris as the starting center fielder, and uh, and he plays every day. Um, you know, because as Ligaris plays more, uh, we're starting to see more from him. 
we're starting to see uh, that if he can stay on the field, he can be a productive player. And I think you'll hear Keith say this a lot on the broadcasts, that his defense is so good, his glove should play him into the everyday lineup. And I agree. I mean, I'm totally on board with that. I think defense has been so undervalued by the Mets over the last four to five years. Uh, you've got a gold glove center fielder that barely plays. Um, and that's not because of Terry Collins, where everyone goes nuts and starts blaming Terry for everything, which is another thing I don't understand, but whatever. Uh, it's because of roster construction. I mean, you had you had outfielders, you had Granderson, you had Bruce, you had Cespedes, you had Conforto. Where are you going to play Ligaris in that scenario? You're not. You can't. So, you know, the Mets have to decide whether they believe in Juan Ligaris or not. And if they don't, they should trade him. Because a, a team that has a really, really good offense would kill to have a guy like that platooning center field. <laughs> Period. There's, there's no question about it. So... My goal going forward for the rest of the season is to keep watching closely on how Lagaris and Nimmo perform. Um, my preference is Lagaris over Nimmo because of his defense. But again, we'll have to see how things unfold. So tonight the Mets continue their series with the Reds. Uh, we'll see how things shake out and see if the offense can remain uh, positive as it did last night. Um, I have no idea who's pitching for the Mets. I'm embarrassed to say it, uh, but it's probably not someone great. <laughs> Uh, I don't. I think it might be um, uh, not Gazelman, um, uh, Tyler Pill, or Chris Flexen. So whatever. Uh, I'm sure the Reds will have a field day with that. But anyhow, uh, that's tonight at 7:10. Uh, so I will of course be watching. I hope you will too. Uh, I thank you for watching this video today. Um, if you're not already following me on Twitter, please do so at Mr. Underscore Met. And as always. Let's go Mets.